This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where leaders, seasoned entrepreneurs, and business owners share their wisdom. It's straight to the point to respect people's time, and because we know knowledge and wisdom turn to business possibility, and possibility mixed with support and action become reality. In this podcast, we discuss leadership, sales, marketing, operations, team development, quality, and finance to drive sustainable results and everlasting impact to make the world a better place. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Corey, welcome to the show. Brad, it is so good to see you. Thank you for inviting me. Such a pleasure to have you here. Share with the listeners a little bit about who you are and what you do. So, yeah, uh, I am a horribly curious individual and uh, have an attention span of a flea. And uh, it's driven me to just be so, like, excited about helping all these different people with their companies and businesses. I work as a startup advisor um, and an incremental, like, CXO. So I'll work, uh, say, five hours a week as a CMO for one company, maybe a COO for somebody else. Uh, I build functions and then I hand them off to people who can stand being around for longer than I can. If that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I love, it. I love like when things are on fire, I love putting fires out or like tampering them down just a little bit, but as soon as they are tamed, yeah, that's when I fall asleep. So yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. That resonates with me totally, Corey. I totally get it. So, and I love that not only do you say CMO, but you also said COO too, because that's a less fractional position, less known fractional position. I know that because I do that too. So it's great. And there are not a whole lot of us. I imagine you have some integrator side to you who are doing that fractional. So that's a great service. It's an underserved market. So um, I celebrate you for that. Very needed. Yeah, these uh, it's um, you know, there's so many founders that have amazing, amazing technology, amazing businesses, really strong teams, uh, but they need that glue, right? And they also need the process. Um, they're absolute experts in whatever it is that they're doing, uh, but they didn't go to school or they have no interest in some of the more maybe boring, uh, but like. Uh, incredibly important aspects to making sure that the bills get paid you know uh, people have this thing they want to get paid right indeed it's i think it's probably a, <laughs> an important part of business indeed <laughs> yeah, right. I know. up and down the chain exactly so i like to sit in between it. there and make sure it all happens no, it's a great, it's a great point. So we're here and we're laughing and joking about it, but it's a really, it's a really important point. There's a lot of visionaries out there. I think what's said, I don't know how 100% accurate this is, but what's said is, is for about, for uh, every hundred visionaries, there's about four integrators. So I mean, that operational space, those systems, those processes, look, I mean, they're necessary. <laughs> they yeah, drive, they yeah. help drive revenue. They help produce things, but uh, you know, it's not, it's not everybody's cup of tea. So really needed and important. It's great stuff. What's the best thing? So look, I'm looking at you. So if you're watching, you'll get this, but if you're listening, you're like, you have a great background. You're out and about. I think you're in St. Pete. You said you can yeah. see, you can see like the awnings in the background and everything. Like you're out and about, you're out doing it, right? You're out in the field <laughs> or maybe you're on vacation. What's the best thing, Corey, about being in business? Um, you know, for me, uh, for the business that I have is the best thing is actually being able to, to, to work with all of these incredible visionaries working on problems that I had no idea existed. Hmm. You know, the, 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 the favorite moments I have are at, are at uh, conferences or meetings or cold calls. Cause like you, I imagine you were like this, like I'll take any meeting. Someone's like, I wanna, I wanna meet. I'm like, yep, here's my calendar. Let's do this. Let's, let's sit down or let's do this virtually. I don't care. Um, I, just, I just deeply love learning about all these really exciting things people are working on and, 
And then if I can help out, I just want to leave a place better than I found it, you know, whether it's a half hour coffee meeting or if it's an hour lunch or if I have a month engagement. Uh, so it's, it's that variety that I love so much about being in business. I love it. I love it. I see, I've seen a theme here about not monotonous variety, <laughs> change it up when it becomes monotonous. I'm out. <laughs> uh, it's, it's great stuff. I mean, that's, that's one of the greatest things about being an entrepreneur. So I, I love it. Here's a fun question for you. This is my favorite question. We hear from a lot of, a lot of other business owners, they're getting so much business that sometimes the chaos causes overwhelm. I know you'll eat this one up. <laughs> Would you be willing to share your thoughts on that, Corey? Uh, well, I mean, I, that, that's, a, that's a great question. It's, um, I, I really, I do spend a lot of time helping people identify priorities and focus, you know, because uh, they, they say, you know, if you have 20 priorities, you don't have a priority, right? So let's, Let's build a list. Let's systematize. You know, here's the uh, here's the COO in me, right? Like lists and priorities and you know, like check boxes and you know checklists, uh, all that fun stuff, the boring things. Let's get this out of your brain. Let's put it on a map. Let's get it down on paper. Let's put a mural board together. I don't care what technology you want, but it's all fantastic. I'm I'm a technology agnostic. I'm methodology agnostic. I don't care if you're a yellow belt. I don't care. Like at the end of the day, let's just let's just let's 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 uh, gsd right is that what it's called <laughs> so, that's it you nailed it small quick wins small quick wins all day long and uh, that keeps us all motivated especially at the early stages um i focus on zero to five type people like we talked about earlier the five to ten folks like they're probably established and that's when i'm i get a little sleepy um but yeah, the, the appetite for someone to want to tackle the whole problem all at once, uh, that's, it's tempting, but let's break it down. Let's break it down. Let's make it manageable. Let's have the appetizer first, maybe two appetizers and move on. I love it. And I, I, I love that you framed it up that way too. So yes, let's GSD, get stuff, <laughs> stuff. done, <laughs> kind of, stuff. kind yeah. of like that. <laughs> get stuff done, right? However. I like that you said like all the checklists and all that. I mean, I really love that. You had me like jumping for joy when you were talking about, talking about language. You speak my language. There's this, there's this focus that's necessary. There is this priority that's necessary. But I imagine you find a lot of startups. You work with startups. So I imagine you find a lot of startups who get this shiny object syndrome. Or they go from idea to idea, 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 idea. Um, can, you, can you share some, some thoughts about how important it is either to stay focused or to shift and pivot or like, what's that look like in your world? You just well, share some yeah. candid thoughts. No, that's, that's a, that's a really excellent question. I, I have, a, I have a lot of experience with folks that don't necessarily have their value prop figured out. You know, it all starts there. Like you, you, you start with that and everything has to serve that. And if it doesn't, well, then maybe your value prop is wrong. That has to change. But it's, it's similar to establishing a culture of an organization. It starts at employee number one, who's at the founder. You can't, it's a really difficult to fix culture after 100 employees, after 200 employees. You know, the, just like it's hard to do the pivot. It's not impossible, but it's hard to do a pivot after you, you're, you've invested $50 million in what you're doing and you're, all, you're already at 1,000 customers. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, this isn't what we do anymore. Like, <laughs> Can we just figure out that value prop first? Can we can we figure out who we are first and then move from there? And these are these are horribly simple things, but terribly important. And uh, yeah, I, I usually take a good weekend or a week, or sometimes it takes two weeks. Sometimes it takes me getting fired. But like the idea is, let's we got to challenge those things. Like, who are you? What do you stand for? And everything must serve those simple things. And it's usually three to four sentences at most. And if we cannot defend everything we do day to day, I don't care what the decision is and who the employee is or teammate, uh, then, then we're not on alignment. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Yes. <laughs> so many, so many conversations I have around this topic <laughs> <laughs> with potential clients and clients. I, 
I am 100% with you. I support you. If you're listening and watching, I really want you to absorb what he said. It's simple stuff, but it's really powerful. And so many business owners get six months in, get a year in, get, it's not about the timing. Get your, get your value proposition down. Get your unique selling proposition reeled in. Look, yes, it changes and evolves over time, but it's so important. And what I really want to highlight what you said, Corey, is that everything revolves around that thing. So I'm reminded of the Queen Bee Systems. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but that comes from a book. So it's like the yep. Queen Bee, right? Everything revolves around the QBOS. Everything revolves around that. And I love that philosophy. That's stuck in my brain. And so that's what I was thinking of when you shared. It's such an important point, Corey. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, like there, there's so many really great advisors out there that I just love. And I love working with uh, that. As long as you have that singular focus, you'll be fine. Right. And even if that means that, OK, this isn't the right idea, but at least it was the singular idea. and We didn't get confused. Like it, ugh. Yeah. So anyway, we, we could go on for hours. I think you and I bet. <laughs> <laughs> on this particular topic. Yes. Will it evolve? Yes. But stay focused on the, the main thing. I love it. Question number four, Corey, what other successful business owners like yourself, of course, should be on the Unlimited Wisdom podcast? Uh, I have a, I have a, I have an incredible creative and incredible businessman uh, that I've been, I've had the pleasure of working with this last year and a half. Uh, his name is Two Eagles Marcus. Uh, <laughs> he's from, uh, his, his, uh, his tribe is uh, Taos, uh, Pabloan, uh, it's from the Red Willow people in New Mexico. He's a publisher. He's got a varied uh, experience, especially in like Web3 and digital space. I highly mm. recommend talking to Two Eagles Marcus. Love it. I love it. You, yeah, you said there was a, were there two? Was there a? Well, I mean, I could give you, I could give you people all day long. Uh, <laughs> so I really also, I know there's a founder that I'm working with right now. She's incredible. She's working on, uh, she has a patented uh, air quality monitor and filtration system. It's uh, it's called Senzi. She has uh, this really unique uh, low profile infrared sensor. And that's what really makes it in impressive. It detects pathogens, volatile compounds. Like if we want to know if there's COVID in automobiles or in apartments mm. or in hospitals, like her technology does it. Big data play. Uh, she is a young, already, uh, I think she's a, uh, is she, is she even 30 yet? I don't know. She's not like, she's in her, maybe yeah, she's young, young uh, woman founder out of uh, the Caribbean. And uh, uh, just kicking, kicking ass. We're in 75 hospitals in Latin America. We're patent pending the United States. Uh, inclusive team builder. Yeah. Eugenie is her name. Love it. I love it. Two really unique things. I love it. It's great stuff. So that's the greatest thing about working with startups, isn't it? Never boring. Corey, what piece of wisdom? I know you have a lot to pull from here. So dig deep. It's just one <laughs> piece of wisdom <laughs> just because of time. So what piece of wisdom would you share with other business owners, Corey? You know, the, uh, the power of network and curiosity. Those two things combined are unstoppable. They're both uncomfortable. But power of curiosity, building one's network. Yeah, I love that. Tied together. So that's pretty unique. So curiosity and networking. Talk to me about yeah. that. Share some, share some deep wisdom from this pull from <laughs> within, Corey. Come on. All right. I, I was trying to keep it concise and quiet. So, uh, <laughs> you did so, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, also, that means I guess that's a third one. Clarity, clarity, clarity. If you can't get it out in six words, then rework it, edit it. You know, so like, um, I love it. Yeah, on the on the curiosity part, uh, the number one skill that most CEOs hire for in the really busy, large growth, hyper growth companies, they say curiosity. That's what I hire for. Nothing else. I don't care where you came from. I don't care who you are. I don't. I don't care. Just be curious. Get it done. Find out a way. Um, with the networking. It's not like who you know. It's not who you know who you know. It's uh, it's that third, fourth, fifth, sixth removed connection that is the most valuable. We call them low stakes. Those are the ones 
that really expand your width of, uh, of accessibility. Those, those are the ones that are gonna have like your master hires. Those are the ones that are gonna have the experts. You just gotta like keep the digging and keep meeting people. Um, do what Brad and I do, take all the meetings uh, because yeah, you, know, you never know. I just said that on the call today. You just, <laughs> you just never know. I mean, when I was, when I worked in corporate, they always say, well, you never know who's going to be your boss someday or some, some, something like that. I don't know if I have it right, but you know, I just said that to a client today. It was like, you never know what this person that you're on this meet and greet call with is going to do five years from now. They might be a billionaire. You just don't know. You have no idea. <laughs> Maybe they desperately just need your help, but it's true. They, I love the curiosity aspect of it. So look, when you first said that answer about what's number one CEOs are looking for, there was, I had a little bit of resistance when I heard that and I'm just candid and honest. And I was like, I don't know about that because I always say resourcefulness. The number one thing they look for is resourcefulness. But when you shared that curiosity and networking, those are powerful. I think, I think resourcefulness comes from curiosity. It's probably the, you, you know, the root is probably curiosity. So I love, I love what you shared. It's very powerful. Well, I think it's uh, got a really important feedback loop, right? So we, we're deeply curious. We're driven to find solutions. We find solutions. We add those resources to our toolkit. And then we expand our toolkit, like, constantly. It's kind of like, it's like Amazon. Like, more products, more customers. So maybe for you and I, more curiosity, more resources. More resources, more curiosity. More this, more that. And we just get this like insatiable appetite for like problems and buyers and all the fun things like, Oh, I got, I got a tool for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now that for my listeners, people watching and listening is actually funnier than you realize. <laughs> people <laughs> tell me that all the time. Oh, I know you got a tool for that. So thank you, Corey. Yeah, I dig that's it. Funny. That's what curiosity creates. We're like, Oh, I got a tool for that. I imagine you say that often too. Corey, thank you so much. Look, I want to ask you about this. What you've shared is great value so far. Curiosity, really important. If you're not, that's not something you can be taught. You either have that or you don't. You either have the ambition or you don't, right? So if you don't, I encourage you to muster it up and find it somewhere because that's what people are looking for. But what I wanted to ask you about is a little bit about teams, right? So I know much of what you do surrounds, uh, you know, what's behind building teams, right? Could you share with the listeners or anybody watching or listening? Because I think one of the biggest struggles out there for companies of any size, whether you're in startup mode, whether you're established, now in the time we're in currently right now, like it's hard to find people. So yeah. would you be willing to share just some thoughts on what you think is really important um, in building in building teams? uh first uh buy-in like let's let's get on the same page i want to know that you actually want to build what we're building i want you to be emotionally connected and i want you to be curious about like you know i, I want i want to hear like oh you're like what are you doing how are you doing it like i listen for the questions i, I beg for the questions right i'd rather i'd rather the candidate interview me as a team leader than me interview them i don't care if you know anything about my industry i really don't um, so that's, that's cool. You know, that's, that's, all, that's important. Uh, as for leaders though, for advice, I always like, I say, build a balanced team by balance. I don't use the word diversity. I want balanced teams. If it's global, great. Be global. If it's distributed, awesome. Be distributed, but encourage environments of open, candid communication, encourage dissent. But then also when we decide on something, we all commit, like we have to commit. Let's disagree but let's commit once we actually yes. decide. Now, now management, my committee sucks also. Nothing gets, rarely do things get done fast. So someone's got to come down and be like, hey, you know what? This is the framework by which we decide. Okay, decisions made, let's move forward. Was it wrong? Okay, fine, it was wrong. Let's do something else. Let's pivot, innovate, whatever, keep moving. I'm wrong all the time. I love being wrong. I can't wait to find more reasons to be wrong, but like, Let's just, let's just, you know, GSD. So um, inclusiveness, it's also, that's what I mean by balance. Let's be curious, let's buy in, let's be here together. Um, and uh, that's really, it's really, oh, 
you know, the other thing is like, I also like to have my founders work on redundancy. I say, Hey, you know what? Like you as a CEO, I'm sorry, buddy, but you are also replaceable, especially if you're taking on investment, like you have just replaced yourself by money. So be careful when you want to do that. Um, redundancy, like build more team than you think you need because you need it. Like build that pipeline. Pipeline is succession planning. It's so important from the beginning. Don't wait till you're, don't think that you have time to wait till you're like a fortune 500 company to think about like succession planning. It's important from when you're a mom and pop shop. I don't care what analogy you work on. If you get a food stand, if you, if your family relies on that money from that food stand, well, who's going to cook for you if you break your leg? I love it. I love you. Look, you dropped so many real key words there. Some real true. I know the word value is used all the time now, but like there's some real valuable lessons that they're short, they're brief, but they're powerful and they're deep. A couple of the ones that really stood out to me. Well, I love the whole succession planning thing. So a little to just to build on what you shared and the importance of it. I actually use what's called TPI. This came from my military experience years and years ago. It just stands for two-person integrity. Everybody within the business should be able to do what needs to be done for every position. I just simplify it and call it TPI. It's the same thing you said. I just said it in a different way to highlight and showcase what you said. You got to have some kind of succession planning from, from CEO all the way up or down, depending on how Absolutely. you position your company. I love it. Another thing that really stood out to me, actually, I got chills when you said it, Corey, I kid you not, because it's so, it, it's so rarely talked about, but it is so powerful. So I really want to highlight what you said here. You said, let's create a plan. And if you disagree, that's cool, but we're going to disagree and commit. I talk about this all the time in teamwork, and most people have never heard about it. You literally <laughs> said... We're going to disagree. Look, everybody's going to be heard inclusively. They're all going to chip in, but we may not agree, but we're going to make a decision and we're going to GSD. We're going to get stuff done. So <laughs> yeah. Here's how this is going to happen. Here's the executive decision. You can disagree if you want, but this is where we're going. That is such a powerful concept that is not taught in the masses enough. So thank you for sharing that, Corey. Very, very powerful stuff. Look, you shared some other stuff too, but the third thing I want to highlight is just the inclusiveness. Like, so servant leadership is great. Inclusive servant leadership is even better. It's even better. So we just add a word to it and now you start to include your whole team. So it's, it, you know, they're all feel included and they're actively engaged. This is really powerful stuff. So thank you for sharing the concepts with us and just expanding on, you know, how these are great concepts to build a team. Corey, thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'm so excited I know to we, make your request, Brad. Really? <laughs> yeah, no, I know we can go on and on and on and Only on. Only making new friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, look, I know you and I could talk about business all, all day long and we would love it and we would have fun because I know fun is one of your values. Let's shift <laughs> gears for a moment away from business because i imagine you agree <laughs> i'm looking at your shirt i'm looking at where you are i look at the smile on your face and so i imagine you also agree that we work to live and not live to work so what's the most fun vacation you've ever had Corey? uh you know um i my my family is from uh, the austrian alps and uh mm. i had the benefit of since i was six months old spending every other summer in Austria with my family there. And being in Europe, you're so close to so many countries. It's really difficult for me to pick a favorite anything. Um, I don't have a favorite pizza topping. I don't have a favorite color. Like I, I'm like the worst Libra ever. Um, but I, I, I got a graduation present from my parents to um, the Greek islands and Mykonos, Greece stands out is usually my first uh response and so I, I would like to go back to Mykonos pretty soon nice I love that now for you listening and watching you might have to scroll back and like volume up a little bit because I, I know he, he wasn't using his outside voice for all of that but we did hear you and it was a great vacation story so <laughs> thank you Corey and yes I'm teasing you a little bit I know you're out and about so I appreciate it that sounds like an amazing vacation 
So was, you all, uh, if you missed great. that, if you missed that, just scroll back and listen to it. It was a great story. Corey, you've got some cool initiatives happening with startups and, and what you do. Would you be willing to share some with your outside voice? Share some. So what's happening? What kind of initiatives, campaigns are you working on? How, you know, how, share something exciting. You've been pretty humble during this podcast. So share something amazing. Well, I appreciate I appreciate the question. Um, recently, I was awarded with uh, being the, the global chapter director of the year for Startup Grind, which is the largest network of uh tech entrepreneurs on the planet. Uh, we're represented in over 125 countries. We have 700 chapters, huge global imprint, a lot of impact. Um, couple that with my newest relationship with Seamless Wellbeing and what we do for Michigan companies, because I'm from Michigan, we, do, uh, we, have, uh, we have global conglomerates in Michigan that look to us at Seamless to find innovation around the world that these organizations can license, employ, acquire, invest in, joint venture with, et cetera. And it's all about well-being and human-centered design. So if you have like a wellness enterprise and you're looking to like scale, just get a client or get investment or have a joint venture, I want to hear from you. Seamlesswellbeing.com. I love that. I mean, it's all for the greater well-being, right? Yep. Yep. Yes. <laughs> whether I love whether that. it's like I, our development goals or whether yeah, it's it's uh it's it's a powerful organization that I'm just uh, blessed that they reached out to me and asked for the benefit of my network and I'm just doing what I can to connect founders with uh, opportunity. I love it. I mean, I I make jokes but I'm making because it doesn't have to be so serious it can be fun too. Corey, yeah. I love it. It I'm you know, I make a joke about well-being but it's so important. This is why many of us are in business to make the world a better place. It's not always about the money. Of course, it's about the money. We got to have money to, to create more impact, but it's about making the world that we live in a better place. So Corey, I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking a chunk out of your day while you're traveling to be here, to actually do that, to walk the talk. So thank you very much for adding value to the listeners and the people watching. And I appreciate you. What's when somebody watches this or they listen to this and they say, I got to reach out to this guy, Corey, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Uh, you can find me uh, by, uh, by my handle. It's Corey, the heart. So C O R E Y the heart H A R T. That's my handle on everything. LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I don't, I don't care what 50,000 social apps there are. Corey the Heart. Corey the That's Heart. also my website, CoreyTheHeart.com. So yeah. CoreyTheHeart.com. I love it. All right. That's a great way. So reach out to him on social. Check out the website and GTD. <laughs> <Time is now. laughs> Thanks, Brad, Corey. Thank so I appreciate you. Thanks so much. This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where leaders, seasoned entrepreneurs, and business owners share their wisdom. If you're looking for more on leadership, sales, marketing, or operations to drive team development, higher quality, and high-level sustainable profits, we encourage you to join the Built for Brilliance community on Facebook or reach out to us about one of our mastermind groups, coaching, or consulting, or even fractional COO services. You can reach us at buildbrilliance.net slash contact. We thank you for listening, for sharing the show, and appreciate your rating and reviews as this makes more shows possible. Thanks for joining us.